You are listening to the Healthy Leader Podcast with Tracy Fisher, episode number 43. Welcome to the Healthy Leader Podcast, where it's all about optimizing your health, energy, and performance for your mind and your body. And now your host, Master Coach Tracy Fisher. Has anyone ever asked you, who do you think you are? <laughs> my grandma Noyes, bless her heart. She used to ask me and all of my cousins, who do you think you are? Queen B? And she said it a lot. She said it so much that I remember actually referencing it when I spoke at her funeral. And sometimes she would say it in jest with this big grin on her face. And then other times it would be not so fun. It would be more of a reminder that I was getting a little too big for my own britches, which is another colloquial saying for, I think that you are behaving poorly. You are out of line or you are being inappropriate or acting in some way that I don't think that you should be acting. And we learn from a very early age from our parents, our grandparents, our families, and our peers and the educational system, and then our colleagues and other people, what are the appropriate ways to act according to people? and what other people think. And we are basically just accepting or making up rules about what's appropriate as we go. A great example of this is for incoming cadets at West Point, and they are called plebes. And one of the rules that they give to plebes on how to behave is in regards to what their responses need to be when an upperclassman is communicating to them. So when an upperclassman comes up to you and asks you a question, you have one of four responses that you can choose from. You can either say, yes, sir, or no, sir, or no excuse, sir, or sir, I do not understand. Or of course, if you're speaking with a female cadet, you would say, ma'am, instead of sir. So that particular way of behaving was really hard for me. <laughs> and I remember this one time in particular where I had spent quite a bit of time shining my shoes. Now, this was a little bit of an anomaly for me. So I was very proud of the way that my shoes looked on this particular day. They were really shiny. I could see my reflection in them. So I was very proud of that. And so I went out to formation. And back in those days, in order to get to formation or anywhere on academy grounds, you had to do something called pinging, P-I-N-G-I-N-G, -I -N -G, pinging, which basically means that you have to walk alongside a wall if you're inside a building and turn corners basically like a robot. And as I was turning one of the corners while I was pinging down the hallway, my shoe, my beautifully shined shoe hit the wall and I looked down and there was a huge scuff across it and I didn't have time to go back. So when I got to formation and an upperclassman walked by, he looked down at my shoe and glared at me and said, uh, why did you not bother to shine your shoes, Sizek? That was my maiden name. And I said, no excuse, sir. <laughs> now inside, I wanted so desperately to say, listen, I shined my shoes. I did a really great job and they got scuffed on the way down here. But you're not allowed to explain what happened. That's not one of your responses. That is not how you behave. And the idea here is that they want you to learn how to take full responsibility for yourself at all times, no matter what quote unquote happened. And that, as I said, was a very tough lesson for me. I felt like I was going to bust out of my skin when I couldn't explain myself or have somebody else understand what was going on. And here's the thing. There were plenty of other cadets who had that exact same experience. And some of them were freaking out on the inside like me. But I know for certain that there was this other cadet in particular, he was in my class, who didn't have that response. He didn't care at all that he was being hazed for something that he had no control over. And if you stood us side by side, we were both physically behaving in the same way, we both would say out loud, no excuse, sir. But on the insides, we were behaving very differently. He was as cool as a cucumber. And I 
was freaking out. And honestly, my freak out wouldn't just last during that formation when I got in trouble. I would ruminate on it and I would think, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I really am not cut out for this. I can't get the grades I want. I'm so inadequate. And this one instance could easily snowball into me really disliking myself and thinking badly about myself and really disliking where I was. So even though in that instant I was doing my right thing out loud, on the inside, I wasn't. I wasn't behaving internally or believing in a way that supported me and what I wanted to create. And I share this story with you because this type of behavior, this incongruence with what we're doing on the outside, with how we're feeling on the inside, is something that I see in so many people. People who are highly educated, extremely successful, and they know what they want to do, and they want to do the right thing for them, and they even have a strong understanding of mind management, which I did not have at that point in time, and yet they are still struggling with belief. They don't quite trust themselves or that they will stick to the plan. And there is this underlying flavor of disbelief. This is where the practice of believing comes in. And this concept is critical. It's especially critical when it comes to creating long-term transformation for personal habits and for how good you feel in your life. And so when I work with people, I like to say, we're not just changing habits. We are using those habits to transform your mind and your way of being. And this is really important because yes, you want to get the result that you're looking for, whether it's, you know, to attain a certain level of body composition or to have more energy for what you want to accomplish at work or to create a super fun and intimate marriage. You want to create that result and you also want to be able to sustain it without worrying about it or feeling like you're going to slide back at any moment. You want to be able to trust yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how to simultaneously take your right action and this is where we're going to focus to be able to do it in a way where you really believe in yourself and what you are doing and know that you're going to be able to sustain that behavior. So I want you to remember that it's one thing to do your right thing, to say no excuse, sir, to eat the right foods, to go to bed on time or to stay out of family drama or not gossip or to stay focused at work. All of those things are important. You want to be able to do those right things. It's one thing to do those. And it is quite another to also feel your right thing to be in your right state of mind and to live in a way that's fulfilling for you. And you get to define whatever that is for you. And before we dive into this, I want to talk about the word behave. I think the word behave is really interesting. And so if you break it apart, the Latin root of be means thoroughly or completely or to exist. And the Latin root of have is to own or to possess or to experience. And when you put those together, it helps us remember that behaving isn't just about physical action, but it's also about who we thoroughly and completely believe to be in our existence, in the midst of our action. What are we possessing about ourselves? Are we thoroughly being and integrating the right beliefs about ourselves or are we creating something else? What experience are we possessing and holding on to in our mental and emotional behavior, in our beliefs and in our way of being? And I like this because it speaks to the idea that we can thoroughly experience ourselves and own and possess a certain way of being. And we get to choose what that way of being is, both in our physical actions and also in the way that we are thinking. So how do you do it? How do you make that transformation? We do it by integrating a tool that I call the power of praxis, P-R-A-X-I-S. It's a little confusing because it sounds like practice and it also means to practice. And I actually stole this term from a handbook uh, for teacher education that I looked at a while ago. And praxis 
is defined as an accepted practice or a custom or something that you do, and here's the drum roll, as an applied practice of a theory. And so there's a theory in education, and then there's a way that you practice it. And so when you're integrating this practice in the classroom, you are in praxis. But here, I want you to think about it in terms of the theory being you and what you think about yourself and who you believe yourself to be. We want to create a new way of being, a new way of thinking right when you are taking your action. Now, in the Healthy Leader Inner Circle, we are talking about this concept for the entire month and practicing believing. And what we're doing, simply stated, is learning how to believe in yourself and what you are doing while you are doing it. So when you're in praxis, you're not just going through the motions, you're also practicing feeling in alignment with those motions. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a few examples and some tools today here. So the first step to practicing believing is in answering that question, <laughs> who do you think you are? And what I want you to do is to find a scenario in your life right now. It could be one where you are taking your right actions, but it's not, you feel like it's not working fast enough or other people aren't responding the way that you want them to, or you truly do feel like you're faking it or that you're an imposter. So come up with something right now that is applicable in your life and see if you can't identify who you think you are in that scenario. So for example, in the West Point scenario, what was the difference between what was happening in my mind and that other cadet's mind? How come I was freaking out and he wasn't? And one of the reasons is because we believe different things about who we thought we were. I believed that the situation was unfair that it wasn't right. And there was nothing that I could do about it. So I believed that I was helpless, a victim of sorts. And that made me really mad and angry. The other cadet was really happy that they could not touch him physically. He knew and believed that their words could not hurt him. And since the upperclassmen couldn't touch him or punch him or physically hurt him, he was really glad for that. He was like, I'm totally safe here and I can handle anything these guys got to dish out as long as they don't touch me. So he believed he could handle it. He was not a victim. So how does that apply in your scenario? What do you think about you and who you are in that scenario? Even if you are behaving and doing your right thing on the outside, how are you behaving on your inside? And then you can practice behaving in your mind, in your imagination. You can create an entirely new experience. And this is actually a lot of fun, right? We do this naturally as kids. We use our imagination to transport ourselves and to be an astronaut, or a soldier, or a mom, or a dad. We played with our minds, and that is exactly what I am asking you to do here. I'm asking you to play and to let yourself imagine another way of being. And so I wanna give you some tools to do just that. So the first tool I pretty much have already referred to, and that is you imagining your best self. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples and techniques to try this. So I was just talking with someone who had given up alcohol for Lent and he went to a wedding in Vegas where, as you can imagine, there was a lot of alcohol and, and lots of things to imbibe in. And he didn't. He stuck to his plan. He took his right action. He behaved physically. And when he was telling me about it, he was like, yeah, I didn't have any alcohol, but I don't think I can do that again. That was really hard. There were all sorts of people there who were pushing alcohol on me and I had to keep resisting. And I don't know if I can do that or keep doing that. It was just really hard. And the way that he talked about his success really was with an eye roll and a feeling that it was hard. And the energy was like, this is going to always be hard. And I was able to do it then, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it later or after Lent. And this might sound reasonable to you. And you might even have experienced this yourself. It's a common energy that a lot of us bring with us, even when we are being successful at what we are doing. We're like, yeah, I did it, but I don't trust myself the next time. Or when will this ever get easier? 
And the story that we're telling ourselves and what we're believing is like carrying around an old baggage of thoughts and how we see ourselves and who we think we are and how life is going to be for us. And that story is I'm struggling. I've always struggled and I'm going to continue to struggle. And that is really heavy. Now, all of those facts can be true. No one's going to argue with your experience or his experience. It belongs to you. And if that's your experience, chances are that you are going to continue to struggle with that behavior unless you try a new behavior on. And so what I asked him to do and what I want for you to do is to really imagine a new way of being in your circumstance. You have one in your head that you can play with right now. And for him, I asked him to imagine going to an event where there's alcohol and it's not hard for you not to drink. What would it look like in your mind's eye for you to go to that event and to be able to say no thank you without hesitation, have a great time and not give it a second thought? Now, here's the thing. Right at that moment when I ask those questions, there's like this record scratch moment. You're like, Err. <laughs> I can't make that noise, but you know, imagine a record scratching. It's like we have a brain freeze and often people are like, I don't know. I don't think that's possible. I don't believe that that is possible. It's not realistic. It's not my experience. And I can't even begin to fathom what that's like. And when someone resists thinking of a new scenario, then I think, aha, this is exactly where the speed bump is. This is where we need to figure out what the belief is, how they are thinking about themselves, and how we can change that. Because in this instance, we're not asking you to repeat an old experience. We're asking you to consider a new one. And the ability to consider a new experience is the ability to use your imagination. And this can be a lot more difficult than it sounds. The truth is, any experience is possible. In this particular scenario, we know it's possible because there are a lot of people who used to drink and they don't drink now and they have a great time. And right now you may not be able to see it for yourself, but it is absolutely possible for you too. And I want you to think about that as you are thinking about your scenario. What kind of person would you be if this was not a speed bump for you? What would you need to believe? What if you were the kind of person who didn't just keep your cool with your kids or with parents or colleagues when someone does something that you don't agree with? What if you didn't just act calm, but if you actually felt calm inside? What would that experience be like? What would it look like for you? What if you were the kind of person who could take that stressful situation at the office and immediately turn it into energy for movement and even excitement to strategize a new outcome. What would that look like? What would you need to believe to be that kind of person? Or what if you were the kind of person who looked at that number on the scale and when it didn't say what you thought it should say, that you took that as a challenge and you double down on your commitment? What might those ways of being feel like for you? I want you to imagine it in color. What would it feel like? What would you do? What would you be thinking? Where would you go? Who would you call? So start with that tool of identifying who you think you are being right now and who you want to be. Get a really detailed version of that person in your mind. And I recommend that you write it out. Write it out with your hand on a piece of paper. Just doing that is a huge energy shift all by itself. So that's the first tool is to really imagine who you think you're going to be in that situation. So once you've got that idea in your head, you have who you want to be, then how do you be it? <laughs> How do you practice cultivating it in that scenario? 
So one tool that you can use, I call the celebrity tool. And this is basically where you are the star of your own show. So for example, let's say that you are not being as productive or focused as you would like to be at work. You sit down at your desk and you're spending a little bit too much time checking stocks or scrolling through your phone. And you know that if you could focus a little bit more that you could get, you know, 10 more sales calls in, or you could clear your inbox by the end of the day. So you want to be more focused. So in the celebrity tool, you imagine that you have just won some celebrity status. Let's say that you've just won leader of the year in your industry. And everyone wants to know how you are able to be so productive and attentive to your team and also take such great care of yourself. How is it possible that you can do that? How do you have a smile and be confident and be ready to take on the day and get so much done? So to find out, they're going to follow you around with a video camera. They're going to make a mini movie about you because you are a celebrity. So use that. And when you are at your desk or you're in a meeting and you have the urge to move into an old unproductive habit, remember the camera's on. You can see the red dot and they are watching you. They're recording your every move and you get to demonstrate what it means to have laser-like focus, to be able to think quickly, to respond to input and to make the most out of every moment. And while you're doing that, you feel energized. You're excited about sharing how you do this. You're excited about your work, about caring for the people that you're interacting with. And no matter what goes wrong in your day, you know that you're going to come up with a solution. So that's one way you can create this energy of believing in yourself. Another tool that I have is called WWHD, and it stands for what would your hero do? And the hero could be a celebrity. It could be somebody that you admire. It could be someone who is alive or someone who's not alive. It could be anyone that you want to emulate who you think of as a hero. So for example, if you are struggling with motivation around your health and specifically, let's say your weight and your general mindset right now is this isn't fair. I mostly eat the right foods. It's not working fast enough. And all I have to do is look at a carbohydrate for my weight to go up. Then I want for you to imagine what would your hero do? So in this instance, a hero could be a healthy colleague that you admire, or it could be a bodybuilder (laughs) and imagine what they would think when the scale doesn't cooperate. Maybe they would be intrigued or really curious about what is happening and they might double down on their determination to be really precise about what they're eating and how they're exercising. And they're not worried that the food is bland or that it's the same type of food. They don't care. They are on a mission to be healthy and to be strong. They're not complaining about what they can't eat. They are just in it to win it and to figure it out. Imagine that person and try that on for a day or for one meal or for that moment when you are feeling discouraged. Think about what your hero would do. And then I wanna give you one more tool. And this is a tool that is called One Last Time. And this tool is especially helpful when you are engaging with someone in your family or somebody who maybe pushes your buttons and you get to imagine that this is the last time that you are going to interact with them. Something is going to happen and you will never be able to talk to them again. Now, they can't know it, but you know it. And during this interaction, you want to be your best self. You want to think about, gosh, how would I want for them to remember me? Or how would I want for them to feel in this moment? What is most important? What what do I want to convey to them? What would make them think back on this moment and feel good about it. The thing about this way of being is that it clears up drama and what's important really quickly. So those are some tools that you can use to practice believing. And in close, I want to share with you that there is a distinct difference between faking and believing. 
Faking has the energy or the connotation of deception, right? That's when you're doing the action, but you don't believe in it. You're just going through the motions. You're just faking it. Believing is magical. It's like the way that we were when we were kids and we were pretending. Pretending is believing. It's what good actors do. They bring themselves, mind and body, into the character and let themselves become that character and play and imagine and try on a new way of being. That is magical. And that is what I'm asking you to do here, is to sprinkle some magic into you and your beliefs about who you think you are and to use that to not just do your right actions, which of course we want, but to also become the person who takes those right actions because that is how you transform. That is how you become the best version of yourself. So just go ahead and pretend. And as you do that, remember the inspiring words of Cary Grant. He said, I pretended to be somebody I wanted to be until finally I became that person or he became me. So go forth and do just that. Be the somebody that you want to be. Hey there, if you are ready to take your well-beingness to the next level, come visit thewellness.coach where I've got lots of free resources. And make sure that you type in thewellness.coach, not .com, and I will see you there. 